Hey, welcome. So I asked you guys if you were interested in me pointing out all the hidden meaning within Bulm's Queen of Performances and surprisingly a lot of people were so on board. It really touched my second gen heart. So we're going to start off with the most obvious performance and that is Wanna Go Back. Actually, I'm going to stop you right there to remind you to subscribe to this channel, click the bell to be notified, and you can also do little things here and there to help sustain this channel like liking my videos, commenting, sharing, following me on Amino, and watching my stories. I know a lot of us have been reading so much information about this, there are so many hidden details and I'm living for it. So this performance starts out with Bom looking at herself through a mirror, but it's a very eerie version of herself. She's looking at her doppelganger. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> this whole scenario to me represents YG playing the puppet master. And this is going to tie into the first thing I ever said about G Idol's fire performance in my first Queendom video. She's looking towards herself in a mirror, but it seems that she can't even bear to look at herself so she's covering her face. But then her doppelganger gets up and starts singing and dancing, but it almost doesn't really fit the song. This to me represents YG playing puppet master and manipulating the strings how he sees fit. We all know that YG owns everything related to 21, they're still selling 21 merch and yet 21 is nowhere to be found and as I said in my first Queendom video it seems that everybody except for 21 are able to sing and perform 21 songs and it breaks my heart so this is that symbolism where YG is manipulating 21 songs and allowing other people to sing 21 songs except for 21 themselves that's why Balm is still sitting down while her doppelganger is just kind of dancing but it doesn't really fit the song in my opinion and we see this doppelganger emulating her every move she is literally emulating everything that Balm is in 21 but yet it's not Balm and she can try to emulate Balm as much as she wants but it's never going to be the same Again, just this representation of YG being the puppet master and putting Bulm in a corner while letting everyone else shine. Then we see her walk away and the way she walks is even down to the very way Bulm walks herself. It's very eerie the way this person managed to evoke Bulm's essence, but it's still very uncanny. But then we see her take her hand off of her face and this to me is kind of her cutting the cord, cutting the puppet cord and then getting up. And when she does get up, it's to go and join the other three metaphorical 21 members. Members. And of course, we see her walking towards these three other mic stands. And you will notice that each mic stand is holding a microphone of a different color. And this represents each 21 member individually. Balm has her traditionally green microphone. CL is represented by this gold microphone. Tara has this bronzy, orangey microphone. And Minzi is, of course, represented by a purple microphone. Now, why did she do this? <laughs> because that's what a queen do. It was just so cute and interesting how she managed to evoke 21's essence, not only by having, of course, four microphones, but by having these individualistic characteristics. I don't know if that even made any sense. And I'm sure a lot of you know by now they're wearing outfits that are very similar to their crush era. The entire rest of this performance is the symbolism of the literal rise of 21. We see the backup dancers pulling a lot of choreography moves from past 21 songs, like Come Back Home and even later on, we see In the Club. And then of course, a lot of people were pointing out that the floor itself is draped with this holographic material, which was 21's first album cover to anyone. Now, I thought this was a little bit weird. I thought it looked very out of place. But then when she gets on the stand at the end, we see her rising up with the album cover rising up with her. And this to me represents, again, the literal rise of 21. And a lot of people are thinking it's going to be a mama reunion. I don't want to get my hopes up because we also thought there would be a 21 reunion in Queendom and that didn't happen. I think mama is maybe too close and I think the members still need more time. I don't know, but there's a lot of evidence that is being brought up on Instagram that's making me think otherwise. I don't know, I'm really excited, but I don't want to be excited because then it'll just hurt if it doesn't happen anyways. And a lot of people are pointing out her hair color, that her hair color is very similar to the hair color that she had for their mama reunion however it's also pretty similar to their it hurts era and the song it hurts literally talks about fearing that someone could forget you in their hearts and then on top of that in that song she says no way i can't recognize you're not mine anymore so that might obviously be quite a bit of a stretch because she had red hair in their go away era 
their clap your hands era, in their can't nobody era. And they all have slightly different messages. But I mean, it hurts and go away have very relevant messages at least. I mean, at this point, we all know that all YG does is act a fool and quote unquote, ain't shit without his crew. I'm sorry, that was cheesy. I'll see myself out. There's also a lot of people pointing out the similarities within the lyrics of this song, notably the words goodbye and missing you, which are titles of 21 songs. There's also the lyrics that say, I don't want to be alone tonight, please don't let me go, which evoke CL's and Minzy's please don't go vibes. When they say, I don't want to be alone tonight, please don't go, stay by my side. So I tried looking into this and maybe some of these are stretches, but maybe they aren't. I'll let you guys be the judge of that for yourselves. She says she's a lost child, and in Missing You, Tara says that she doesn't like the love of children who play with fire. So, you know, fire (laughs) by 21. Anyone? No? To anyone? Okay, I'll stop. Also, can we take a minute to talk about CL in this performance? Oh my god, like, as soon as she started singing, I actually felt personally attacked and started crying, like, six times. Wanna Go Back also says... With no darkness in my tomorrow, and in missing you, they say, because the world was always so dark. Then she says that she lost her way, and in 21's song, I Love You, CL says, When you feel like there's no way out, love is the only way. And then she says, Light me up, my dear, and in ugly, they say, I'm trying to smile brightly, but I don't like it. Then the lyrics say that there's no place to come back, which to me kind of goes hand in hand with the lyrics to come back home. Then in come back home, they also say don't leave me at the end of this cold world, but come back to my side. And then in response, Bohm's lyric says, it gets colder as the day goes, the weather out there is cold like my heart. Also, we already know that she did the same dance move to 21's in the club near the end of her performance, but we also see she's saying the same words. And then in Wanna Go Back, she also has the same lyrics, just in a different rhythm, so it's interesting to see how that ties into in the club. Okay, so that was definitely a lot. Make sure you let me know in the comments below which ones you think are legit and which ones you think are stretches. In my opinion, some of them don't really make a lot of sense. However, they do evoke this 21 nostalgia. So definitely let me know what you think. Let's move on to her you and I performance. There's not really much symbolism. And of course, all of my personal interpretation of this symbolism could be completely off. However, I don't know if you noticed this, but she's completely alone in the dark for the beginning of this performance. And then all of a sudden we see that the entire time there was a choir behind her. So she looks so lonely to begin with, but then all along there were people by her side and that is like for us we're gonna move on to eyes nose and lips this is the one where i feel like it's it's there's just a lot it made me feel some type of way first of all the beginning of the performance features her you and i music video but like here's the thing why did they pick you and i i mean the music video is what like three minutes and 40 some seconds long however They managed to put a clip of the music video that features her dead lover's journal that says, I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. So for those who haven't seen the music video, she basically falls in love with someone who is presumably terminally ill, and then they get married, but he eventually dies, and he had drawn this portrait of her while she was sleeping, and he wrote this at the bottom. And like this has nothing really to do with the performance in my opinion. I think this is shade. (laughs) My disdain for YG obviously makes me think that everything is directed towards YG. But to me, it's kind of like her speaking out without actually being able to speak out. Like saying, I'm sorry that I couldn't protect you guys, that I couldn't be there for you guys because I was being held back. I don't know, that's my own personal interpretation of it. Like why did they feature that clip? I don't know, leave down in the comments below how much of a stretch you think that is. So admittedly, this song is iconic and everyone and their mother has covered this song. So I'm finally glad that she gets to cover it as well. Tablo covered it. Jose covered it. That's basically all the symbolisms that I could personally find. I hope you guys aren't disappointed. I feel like maybe you guys would have found some better ones, but I don't know. Make sure you leave down in the comments below all the symbolism that you found within her performances. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to be notified. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.